Hi, everybody. I am here with Lene. She and her husband are co-parenting coaches. They own a business called Raising Blended Families. And I am excited to introduce all you to her here because she has a powerful message to share with all of us. And I think uh, it doesn't matter if you're in a blended family or not, you're going to get a lot out of this interview. So Lene, why don't you start with telling us kind of how this all came to be? How did you become a co-parenting coach? Absolutely. Well, thank you, first and foremost, for having me on here. I'm really excited to connect with you and collaborate and just share a little bit more about my story. So I so thank appreciate you. the time. Um, but like Shauna said, hi, everybody. My name is Lene Pompeo, and my husband, Michael, and I have a business coaching in co-parenting. And really, really to dive deeper than that, it's the relation, like your current marriage when while you're co-parenting, because we know that second marriages have... 68 to 74 percent failure rate which is just crazy and why is that it's because there's a lot of added stressors on your marriage when you've just come out of a second mar of your first marriage and there are other dynamics that really make it challenging so we really look at what does it take to have an extraordinary co-parenting partnership with your ex-spouse so that you and your kids can really just be free to thrive and just have the most amazing family life. So that's really what we're passionate about. Um, my husband, Michael, and I have three kids. Our oldest is about to be 13. Our middle is about to be 11. And then we have a two-year-old son together. So my two oldest are my stepdaughters. Amazing. Thank you. Nice. Right into the teenage years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't even believe that in two months, we're going to have a teenager. Yeah. Things will change. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so did you find through your and your husband's um, path, did you find that your raising children, your vision of that always aligned or when it didn't align, how did you guys work through that? Yeah, no, it definitely did not align. Um, and I'll back up. So before we, I became a co-parenting coach, I was a family therapist for about seven years, seven and a half years. And what I specifically did was I coached parenting. And oftentimes I would be in the back of the room and I'd be taking notes and I'd be observing. And then I'd share my, share what I, my observations with my clients. And that was the way that my clients in my job had breakthroughs is kind of being that second set of eyes and ears and saying like, when you're in it, it's hard to really see how you're being. And so I would kind of reflect back, like, I don't know if you noticed this, but whenever you're speaking about this particular situation, your tone changes and you sound very upset or angry. And then I noticed your child responds in this way. Did you ever notice that? And they'd be like, oh my God, no, I never noticed that. And so we made major headway in that way. But I also got into the habit of observing parents and how they're being with their kids. And so I'd come home and I'd watch my husband and I would be doing what I would do in my work, in my work, which just doesn't work in a relationship, right? right like, right. hey, you're doing this thing. Or, and <laughs> not to say that I was even an expert in parenting because I, had, I never had any kids of my own. And I was just, just a few years into being a step parent by that point. Mm -hmm. So it was really more just being an expert on uh, making observations and giving feedback, really, not a parenting coach at that point. Um, so, but saying all that to say, because of that role, it really made a lot of sense for us to have a lot of conversations about parenting. I'd come home from work and say, oh my gosh, I have this client and, you know, without breaking confidentiality, like this is what they're dealing with. And what, what do you think? How should we go about that? So we actually had a lot of conversations about parenting mm -hmm. and we're very on opposite sides of the spectrum. Oftentimes my husband is very lax. He's yeah. very just like not a big deal, you know, and just super nurturing and loving, like more so than I am naturally. Like it takes something for me to like step into the nurturing role, which is unique for women right. and men. Like our feminine and masculine parenting attributes are kind of switched in our relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very more just, this is what we said, this is how it goes, structure, um, and all of that. So it's been a really great opportunity for us to grow in our marriage to continuously find compromises or continuously give up our way, like our way, like what we think is right mm -hmm. or our partner's way so that we can just have 
a family life that really works because at the end of the day, there is no right way. There is just what you chose to do and just being confident and trusting your partner that they know what they're doing. And if they don't, it's okay. And you can move on and learn from it. I think from the outside looking in, I mean, um, anybody that uh, is in a situation with an ex-spouse, um, you know, it's not always easy. Yeah. And it's, sometimes you got to tread and sometimes there's some animosity in there or turmoil. And, and, you know, when I listen to your story about how you guys are co-parenting, um, it kind of makes me wonder at everyone sitting on this side of the camera, um, what piece of advice would you give them to get through those? Because not everybody has a perfect situation. Yeah, seriously. Well, I think my biggest advice having lived through it is, um, Gosh, actually, I was going to say my biggest advice, but that's not true. I have so much like equally prioritized advice. But one of my favorite things that we've been implementing in our own family life and something that we do a lot of coaching around in our business is shared family meetings. And it sounds so simple, like, oh, yeah, totally. But they're like remarkably transformative if you do them consistently and if you have a structure to it. So in our family meetings that do include my husband's ex and her husband, and sometimes even the kids, we reflect on the past month, what really worked and not just with our kids, but with our communication, like what did, what really worked about our co-parenting partnership and what really didn't work this month or what was something like a grievance that you may have or that we may have that we can, we can have a conversation about in a really positive environment um and then what are things coming up in the next month regarding the kids that we need to start planning now so that we're not like thrown into the lion's den texting at six o'clock in the morning because two hours from now i have to bring this child to gymnastics and i didn't know like oh and those things still happen but it's really just being preparatory and being reflective mm -hmm. and being consistent in that and then, of course, ending in acknowledgments, which is just so powerful, acknowledging our co-parents. Like, wow, Sarah, this month, I just cannot even, can't even begin to say thank you for the way that you've been in the transportation of the kids. And this, you know, I just want to acknowledge you for that. And really getting that praise feels so good and it's so uplifting. Right. So that... That structure of having a family meeting has really transformed our family and it's been the cornerstone of what we teach and what we facilitate in our business today. That's powerful. Yeah, thank you. It is. That, that It takes a lot to let go of the ego, let go of your feelings. It's not about you. It's about the family. Like that, that really takes a lot to do. So yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. It takes a lot at first and then it just becomes the, you know, the air you breathe and the water you swim in and it's just normal. And it almost feels like, I can't believe we ever had a time in our co-parenting partnership where we would have texting fights because we did, we'd have like, I would spend hours just trying to figure out the perfect way to word this particular thing, just text it to her. And then my husband would text me, why did you say that? I mean, it was just chaos and madness. Yeah. And now I feel like I'm just freed up to like, I have more time. Because mm -hmm. we know if there's something that comes up that didn't we didn't really like, we'll just table it and we'll bring it up to the meeting and we can just get it all complete in a 90 minute session once a month, as opposed to hours and hours texting and miscommunicating, yeah. reading wrong, just the whole thing. As, as you probably know, it, it can yeah. get really overwhelming. So it's been really, really powerful. That's amazing. I think that's beautiful. Thank you. So did you find in this journey did you find you had worthiness issues or finding your place in the family or what your role was going to look like as a step parent yeah absolutely that was that's a major part of my ongoing journey that i'm still diving into today because you never arrive and there's always there's always something in your blind spot that you don't know is playing a role in how you're being with people until you know it. Like you just don't know what you don't know. <laughs> so, but what I've discovered in my own personal growth journey and specifically parenting is that this, this idea of am I worthy, this question is an ongoing unanswered question in my life. And I think I noticed that it started when I was seven and my dad left our family. Actually, my mom took my brother and I when they got divorced and moved us across the 
across the, across the country. Right. We never saw our dad again. And what I discovered through my walk in personal development was that that was the first time I really questioned my worthiness. Like, wow, what was it that I did to contribute to this? And that's pretty common for children who, you know, lose a parent or don't have connection with a parent. And so that started it. And then, you know, for the next 20 years, I just gathered evidence to support my idea that I'm just not worthy. Mm -hmm. Joining a family that was already a cohesive family. When I met my husband, he already had his kids and I came into that and that worthiness conversation kept rearing its ugly head. It looked like comparing myself to my husband's ex-wife and wondering if I was just, if I was a better wife, am I doing it better than her? Um, Or am I a good enough mom? Am I, and again, comparing like, how am I as a mom compared to their actual mom? And Oh, I just, it gets overwhelming for yep. sure. And that comes up still now. I'm just, the, the only difference is that I'm able to recognize it and check it quicker, but it still is an ongoing thing that comes up and it's like, oh, it's that thing again. And then I can just put it to the side instead of it like running me. Right. Right. Yeah. I think I, what I love about this and I think why I connected with you in the beginning was the foundation of my business is about worthiness Mm -hmm. and find your worthiness, build some confidence and empower yourself to be, you're destined for bigger things. Yeah. And just like my business, I found within my worthiness issues, I created a business out of it. And then like you, I mean, minus the fact that you were a therapist for how many years, seven years, but you've made a lifestyle out of this because you know other people are living it. You can impact other lives. Like, I think it's it's beautiful. It's amazing. It is. I learned early on in school that if I have a question, there's probably two or three other people in the classroom that have that same question. And so I took that into my life. Like if I'm dealing with this, I know that there's other people in the world that's dealing with this. I'm not the only person that is like, bogged down as a step parent in this unworthiness conversation. So how can I support other people? I'm finally finding my clawing my way out of this hole. Can I bring other people along with me? And just like looking at that, how can I, how can I help rise other people, raise other people up as I, as I am doing that as well? Yeah, that's fantastic. So how do you and your husband have checkups? How do you guys, you know, you get busy with the daily lives, you've got work, you've got kids, you've got running here and there. How do you guys bring it back together and reconnect? Yeah, that's a really good question. Well, actually, my husband and I joined an organization about six years ago that's called Couples Coaching Couples. Um, CCC is what we call it. Okay. It was about months into our marriage that I discovered CCC, and I knew the minute I heard about it, that we were going to be a part of it because it just is so much in alignment with what we believe in, which is anything that you don't look at and track frequently um, tends to deteriorate. That's whether that's your health or your mental health or your any relationship. If you're not putting in the work, it's not going to just naturally get better. You right. have to do the intentional work. And so I discovered Couples Coaching Couples, and we joined immediately. And really, it's an organization of committed couples around the United States Mm -hmm. that are like, I'm standing for us having an extraordinary relationship. And what we do is once a week, we are connected with another couple, and we discuss, again, kind of reflect, again, the reflective piece of, hey, what really worked in our relationship last week? Did we have a breakdown? What caused that breakdown? What are we committed to as a couple? Um, yeah. And it's funny, my husband and I are like 95% of the time, our breakdowns really do have some connection to the fact that we're a co-parenting family. That's the number one issue that we continue to, that continues to come up. Mm -hmm. But we have a couple that we work with for the last five years that really stands for what we're committed to. So there's what we're committed to. And then there's how we actually be in real life. And there's that gap. And it's just about like bridging that gap. Like, okay, say that I'm committed to quality time, but when I get triggered, I hide in my room and that just doesn't work. So what we notice and what we really work on in CCC is that there's what we say we're committed to and how we're committed to being as a couple and as parents. And then there's real life. 
And what we found, and I don't know if we're the only ones, and I doubt it, but that there's really that gap. And it's just about bridging the gap. Okay, how can we continuously and ongoingly show up how we say we're committed to showing up? Mm-hmm. And um, I think, like I said this before, it's not so much that those things don't come up anymore. It's just that we're, we have more facility on recognizing it, communicating that with our, my partner, getting off of it so that we can move on. And so whereas before CCC, I would have a trigger, I'd not recognize it, I would go down and I'd bring my family down with me because I'm an integral part of how we all show up. So if I'm moping or pissed off, then it kind of in- impacts our entire family. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, I'm, I have a trigger, I communicate that with my husband or not and decide that I'm just gonna let that go so that I can be a great part of our family and show up as the stepmom and the mom that I'm really committed to being. So just getting more on top of that. And it's been, it's been night and day, like life changing. And I highly recommend it to everybody. It's just awesome. I'm going to look into that. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that you're in Canada, right, Shauna? Yeah. I don't know if we're outside of the U S but the funny thing is, it's like, why does it matter? It's all done virtually. So right, right. yeah, I'll look into that for you. Yeah, that would be great. I think that'd be awesome. Um, okay, so now I want to focus on you um, because again, I believe all our self-love, it starts inbound first. We inpour mm-hmm. and then we outpour. So how do you find self-love for yourself? Like what, what are your best practices to do, whether it's every day or once a week, how do you get in touch with yourself? Mm, I love that. I, um, have you ever read the book, The Miracle Morning? No. Oh my gosh. Put that on your list. Top 10 books of all time for me. And it's just a short read. It's not so much the book. It's about the practices that I've implemented since reading the book. So what I found is that when I am on point with my miracle mornings, and I'll describe it a little bit for you, then my life just works and I'm a better person. And really what Hal Elrod, which is the author of the book, The Miracle Morning, really discovered was there is six daily actions that he found that when he does them consistently, his life is just leveled up and he has a better experience of life and he's just more productive and more happy. And then obviously the ripple effect happens. So what those six are, he calls them his lifesavers, So the acronym is S-A-V-E-R-S. The S stands for silence or spirituality. Really what I do personally is I just sit with myself and I'm just connected to the universe and my creator and I'm just in gratitude. Like that's what I personally do, but I'm silent. Right. Sometimes I'm like, that's the only time I'm ever silent in my entire day. Like I'm constantly... (laughs) So it's key. Um, But a lot of people just meditate for that time. Some people just, yeah, whatever you do. The A is affirmations. And I know that some people, affirmations are kind of a, I don't know. Sometimes I, I hear a lot that they're looked down on. Like, I am happy. It's not so much that, but like, really, who do you say that you are? And like, speak that out. Words are powerful and the universe and God are listening. So like, just really taking that on. And um, yeah, I I like to switch up my affirmations. They're not, they're just like who I am, like who I really am committed to being. And I just speak that out. The S-A-V. V V is vision or visualization. And this is where you just get to tap into your level 10 life. Like what's your vision for your life? It could be specific to an area. Maybe it's just relationships or maybe it's in your parenting, I really, I do it all, all encompassing. And I just, I, um, when I started this practice, I wrote out my life's vision and then I recorded myself saying it in a high vibration, like super excited. Right. And then every morning I listen to that. And when I'm listening, I close my eyes and I actually like run the video, like it's a movie in my head. And so I see it, I see myself doing the thing. That's or, the first affirmation I ever did for myself is similar. You say it to the universe. Yes. Right? Like you have to get it out there. You say it because it just, when you say it to the universe, it's going to come back. Totally. I 100% agree. Yeah. And so yeah, that's the V, vision. Um, e is exercise. R is reading, a personal, de- personal development book specifically. But it really could be anything. 
Um, and then S, the last S is scribe, which he just wanted to sound like lifesaver. So you couldn't put J, but it's like just journal, like write about what you're experiencing your last, your past day or what you expect, what you want to create for the day. So that's your lifesavers. Each one is 10 minutes long. So all you need to do is wake up an hour earlier than you normally would. Yep. Which a, a lot of times I hear people like an hour earlier, <laughs> but seriously, it's key. And now like for me, waking up an hour earlier and diving into this, it's just like, I feel like it's the best self-care I can ever do. It's while right. my son is still sleeping. So when he wakes up, I'm excited to get him instead of like, oh my gosh, you're already awake. Like it just changes the conversation. Right. Um, so I would say that's the number one thing that I consistently do. And there are times, seasons of my life where I'm like, I can't be bothered. I'm not going to do it. And I pay for it every time. And my husband's like, have you not, like, when was the last time you've done your miracle morning? I'm like, it's been a couple of months. And I get back on track because I can feel the difference. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. I mean, yeah. I think connecting with yourself is so invaluable. So I think that's perfect. It, it is. And yeah, I highly recommend the book. It's super affordable on Amazon or even Audible. And it's awesome. Perfect. Well, I really appreciate our time together. Like, you have so much insight and I just, I love the terminology you use. It resonates with me. Um, so tell us how people can find you. Oh, for sure. Thank you. Well, you can find me two ways. We have our website, which is raisingblendedfamilies.com. And currently our website's under construction. We're doing some changes, but you have the opportunity when you head to the website to join our mailing list and what we do is we just add value as much as we can we do interviews like this um or just find ways that this topic of co-parenting and raising blended families how can we how can we contribute to that space and we just communicate that way so if you would like to be a part of our community we would love for you to join and how you do that is go to raisingblendedfamilies.com. And we also have a Facebook page, which is Raising Blended Family. So you can find us either, either way. We'd love to connect with you and um, see what you're really dealing with and how we can be a support to that. Awesome. I, th I love communities. I just... Me too. Yeah. Yeah. It's how we thrive. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lene, and I will drop all the links below so everyone can find you, and um, I'm sure we'll do this again. I know. I can't wait. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate you. Thanks. Bye, Bye everyone.